welcome to the Miller Life Kitchen. I am Beth and today I am here to share with you the 25th video of January 2023. Put on by Lisa over at Sutton's Days and we have a sponsorship this year. It is for Four Jars Canning Company. They have three wonderful prizes that they are sharing with you and also Lisa is giving away a prize as well. All the prizes will be given out on the 31st live on Sutton's Days. So tune in to see if you've won. Good luck to everyone. I will have in my description box a list of all the channels and their links to their channels as well as a link to Lisa's site that has all the prizes and a calendar of events to make sure you don't miss any. The way that you enter is by watching each video and leaving a comment and you can possibly win one of the four prizes. The bonus is all the recipes and the inspiration from all the wonderful canning videos that have been put on this month. I am going to be bringing you a venison recipe today. However, if you don't have a hunter in your life and you don't have venison, you can also substitute beef. I'm going to be doing a recipe from Pressure Canners for Beginners and Beyond. It's a book by Angie Schneider. This is an excellent book. I love this one. I've made a lot of recipes out of this. And she also does follow canning guidelines. So they are all safe recipes for you to can. So you don't have to worry about that. What I'm going to be bringing you today is venison carne gasada. Now, I did ask Siri, how do you say this? That's how she told me to say it. But you know what? I'm just eating it. Who cares if I say it right? So don't come at me if I'm not saying it right. You probably say it better than I do, that's for sure. But it's, it's in the cookbook on page 147, and let's get started with the recipe. I have everything I need here. I have everything organized. I have my rings, I have my lids, my four jars lids here in a bowl. I'm gonna be adding um, from my kettle hot water in there and have them soaking while we're packing them up. And I have my ladle, my debubbler, and my ingredients. We are gonna be doing half recipe as I mentioned earlier. So I need five cups of beef broth. So what I'm gonna be doing is using five cups of water and then I'm adding better than bouillon to it to make it beef broth. Then I have my 4.7 pounds of venison. Um, I have this recipe, it called for eight pounds of venison. And my three roasts came out to 4.7 pounds. So it's a little over, but that's okay. More meat's fine with me. This is my two pounds of onions. And then I have one teaspoon of pepper and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And the reason I did that is because there's salt in here. So I didn't want too much salt. This is one and a half tablespoons of cumin. This is two teaspoons of chili powder, one eighth cup of garlic. And that is everything. So this is a hot pack recipe. So we are gonna go to the stove and get our venison started. First step to the recipe is to brown your meat. Like, this is venison, but if you're using beef, same. All the directions are exactly the same. So we're gonna brown this off. You do not wanna cook it all the way through. It's literally to just brown it and have it rare. I did put lard in the bottom. You could use oil. And just uh, for this 4.7 pounds of meat, it would be one tablespoon. If you're doing full recipe, which is in the book, it's two tablespoons of oil. Okay, I've slightly cooked the meat and I am not going to drain it. I'm supposed to keep the juices. And I'm gonna put in my onion. I left the lid on this because these onions really strong okay got all my onion in there again with two cups then we're going to put in
the garlic. You're basically putting all your ingredients in now. Water. My better than bullion. Chili powder. Pepper and a little tiny bit of kosher salt. And then our cumin. That is everything to make the broth. Now you're going to do a medium boil for five minutes. I am doing half the recipe, as I mentioned. Um, it, call, it says it would be 12 pints. So I have six, I have seven, I have an extra one just in case I need that. These were tempered in the dishwasher um, on the sandy rinse to warm them up because you want the jars to be warm because you're hot packing, which won't give you jar thermal shock. Let me just get these out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I have my lids. I have them. I poured very, very hot 212 water over them and they've been soaking while I've been doing all the other processes. So. Let me quick show you. Here is the final cooked product. This was five minutes at a medium boil. All right, got you back. <laughs> so I have my funnel on. Now we're gonna pack the jars. We're going, to, we're going to be doing this to one inch headspace. Sometimes I find with the funnel that it kind of makes you not be able to see the exact headspace. If you lift up the funnel a little bit, you can see the headspace a lot better. And debubbling. I like to kind of do it when the funnel's on, makes less of a mess, but you wouldn't have to. You could definitely just debubble without your funnel. But if you are looking for headspace and you're checking it, but this is at the one inch, you, you don't wanna tilt it either. You want it to be level. Now I'm going to wipe my rim and I am using vinegar today. Ooh, that jar's hot. I'm going to put on my four jars lid, grab a ring, tighten it up finger tight, and into my warming canner. I have my canner on the stove warming up. After I was done using the stove, I put it right on there at a low heat just so it could start warming up. I am using my 16 quart Presto canner today. And I have my rack in the bottom. And I also have the amount of water that's called for, for my canner. So always check that, what your canner calls for as far as how much water you're gonna be putting in. Bubble. Again, you can do it like this. I'm gonna wipe my rim. I have all of my jars in the canner. 
I ended up with six pints. There is a requirement for every canner about how many uh, jars you can put in to process properly. This is a 16.5 Presto. The minimum is two quarts or four pints. I ended up with six pints, so it's fine. But I also added, and you don't have to do this. I just do this so I am. it's my little insurance that stuff's not going to bobble around. This is a processing time of 75 minutes. You even could put lids on these and keep it in your preps as sterile water. I do already have a bunch. I'm just leaving them without the lid. Here we are with our steady stream of steam. I am timing it for 10 minutes. I've set the timer already. Um, I wanted to point out that this has not popped up yet and the water will stop coming out of there. And what I wanted to show you though is, see how there's water coming out of there? That is evacuating all of the air out of the canner. So you do want to see that sputtering. Um, that is what's happening during your 10 minutes is we're evacuating all of the air out of the canner. So once 10 minutes is up, we are gonna put our weight on. Oh, we're catching my, it's trying to come up. It's gonna happen shortly. But see, that's what's happening. It's just gonna push that up and it'll be, the, the seal will be made. Once the 10 minutes is up, we're gonna put my weight on and then we're going to be processing this for 75 minutes because it's pints. My time is up, so now I'm gonna turn off the stove. And then what we're gonna be doing is waiting for my gauge to come down to zero. Also important that this is down as well. And don't remove this. That will stay on, don't touch anything. Just let everything come down to pressure and then you will be cracking open the lid. My house is pretty cold, so I have the lid cracked like this, and I'm gonna leave it like this for a little bit, then take my jars out. Here they are, my six pints, no siphoning, headspace looks great, and they are ready to sit for 12 to 24 hours, and then I will remove the rings and label, and they are ready for my pantry so shelves. I'm gonna bring you down and we're gonna open it. Here's the seal. Looks great. It smells really good too. So, I'm just gonna put a piece on the plate to show you how it's gonna break up. Breaking up beautifully. The texture of the meat is still excellent. What you're going to do is thicken this up. I'm gonna use Wondra, I love doing this. Just kind of sprinkle it in. I'm telling you, it never gets lumps. <laughs> you could do a cornstarch slurry, however you wanna thicken it up. Some ideas are in the book, it says mashed potatoes, you can put it over. Um, also, you can put it in a tortilla, tortilla and have like a meat taco. Also though, I was thinking to myself, this would be good over rice, egg noodles. Could even put it in a soup. Okay, now that I thickened that up a little bit, I don't really want it so thick it's gravy-ish, but now I'm gonna put the meat back in. A couple onions in the bottom there. <laughs> Get those back. There it is. Sky's the limit on what you could do with this. Now let's taste a piece. Look for a little one. It's really hot, so hold on. Flavor's excellent. Sorry, I have food in my mouth. <laughs> Flavor is excellent. I would not change any of the flavoring in this. Salt's perfect. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. Another successful canning recipe in the books. 
Thank you for joining me on my channel for January 2023. It's been such an honor to come into your homes and to share with you some of my canning knowledge and recipes. I appreciate your time watching and commenting. And thank you, Lisa and Four Jars, for all the wonderful prizes that someone's going to win. Good luck, everyone. Come again to my channel. And again, I appreciate your time. Happy canning.